to show a close-up of these dogs and I always certain dogs are just my favorite and I have several that are my favorite but this is definitely one of my favorites they just turned out really adorable so most of my dogs have the movable legs I just like the movable legs because you can stand them up or you can have them sitting down this is the first time that I actually made the ears with craft wire so you can have fun and move the ears around I also show you how to make the dog bone name tag looks like a dog bone and I show you how to make the collar I also show you how to make the mouth so this one has a mouth under the snout for the safety doll eyes I use a brown one a really pretty brown one for the one dog and then the other dog I used a confetti so it has a really pretty confetti around the border of the safety doll eye. This is what they look like from behind. You can get the free download for the eye cutouts on my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com for this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a tapestry needle or a darning needle. And you're also going to need a pair of scissors. Here's a close-up of the adorable eyes. I have a free PDF download for the eye cutouts. So for the black glitter felt, as well as the white glitter felt. The little X's are where the safety doll eyes are supposed to go. So you can cut these out to help you get the same size that I used. So you use these cutouts for the black and white glitter felt. And again, this free download is on my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com. At the top of my homepage, you'll see diagrams and graphs at the top of my home page. Just click on that and then you'll find this free download on that link. And you'll also, on a blog post for my Jack Russell Terrier dog, I also put the diagram on that blog post as well. So here you can see where I have mine already cut out. So for my black glitter felt, I used a little bit of a thicker felt and the one that I used is Glitter Friendly Kunin Felt and some of my leftover so it lasts a long time and then the white sparkle is not as thick and you can find this at most craft stores like Joanne and um, Hobby Lobby and they also sell them on Amazon Amazon Prime but on Amazon Prime you have to buy the bulk then you can get your favorite 21 millimeter safety doll eyes. These are from glasseyesonline.com. You can see it has a little confetti around the outside of the eye, which is really cute. So for my original one that I made, I used just a brown one from Glass Eyes Online, but I wanted to do a little fun one for the one on video tutorial. But you can pick whatever 21 millimeter safety doll eyes that you want for your dog and another site that I like to use is 6060eyes.com I recommend the metal or plastic safety latches that go on the back of your safety doll eyes and 6060eyes and glasseyesonline.com both use this style for their safety doll eyes so for those that want to cut their own I don't these these are not circular they're a little bit oval in shape and I have the measurements here. So you have three and a half centimeters in width and the height is 4.3 centimeters for the white glitter felt. And then for the black glitter felt, I have about four and a half centimeters and then five centimeters. So that's the size if you want to cut your own without going to the block. You're also going to need a sewing needle and thread because we sew down the white portion of the glitter felt. 
Now for the ears, I used craft wire. So the craft wire that I used is by Doris. It's a 12 gauge aluminum floral wire. You'll only need one package, and that, this is how much I have left over from my previous package, which was 5 yards or 4.6 meters. I chose the pink floral wire for mine. Now for the, the craft wire that I used, I coil it back on itself so it won't protrude from the yarn. And then, this part is optional, but I'm going to use this tape, and this is a stem wrap tape. And that's just to wrap the coil down so it won't protrude out of the yarn. Now if you don't want to purchase the tape, you can just use regular yarn and tie it down so that it doesn't protrude that way. So there's two options. You can either use the tape to hold it down so it won't protrude, or you can just take and tie some yarn around it and secure it that way. Now I'm going to go over the yarn that I used. This is the yarn that I have left over. So you're only going to need one skein of the Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. And here's some information about this yarn. It's about 14 ounces or 396 grams or 744 yards. It's a white color. Here's some information. It's a medium four, 100% acrylic yarn. And again, you're only going to need one skein of this. And you can see that you still have quite a bit left over. For the alternate color, I used Vanna's Choice Lion Brand. And I only needed one skein. So it's three and a half ounces, 100 grams, or 170 yards, or 156 meters. 100% acrylic, medium four yarn. And again, I only needed one skein. And I don't have any left over with this one. So you're going to use all of this skein of yarn. And the color I chose is toffee. You're also going to need a light pink colored yarn. So you can use Red Heart if you want to. I just used some of my leftover I Love This Yarn, which worked great. And you're going to have plenty left over. I used this yarn for the ears and the tongue. There's a free pattern included with this one. Looks cute but the color that I used is soft pink. Here's some information about this yarn. For the nose, you're going to need a black colored yarn. You can use any medium four, 100% acrylic yarn that you want. I'm using this sparkle, this Red Heart Sparkle or Metallic yarn. I just like how it has a little sparkle to it. So, but you can use regular black if you want to as well. Any medium for 100% acrylic yarn will work for the nose. For inside of the mouth, I used Karen Simply Soft. Now you're going to have plenty of this yarn left over. So if you wanted to, you could also use this for some of the spots on the body. But I don't recommend using it as an alternate yarn choice for the face or the body or the ears, only because it's a different style of yarn, so it may affect the size. But the alternate yarn with this one, the toffee one, works perfectly. But if you wanted to make additional spots on your dog, the body of the dog, you can use this yarn for that too. But I only used this yarn for the inside of the mouth, so you're going to have plenty left over. Now if you don't want to buy an extra skein for the inside of the mouth, your black yarn will work well as an alternative. But again, for mine, I chose to use this style of yarn, some of my leftover yarn, for the inside of the mouth. For the dog collar, you can choose any blue or whatever color that you want for your dog collar. I just used some of my leftover yarn that I have. It's the Karen One Pound. So this one is a huge yarn that I can use for many different crafts. And the color of this one is Royalty. So it's a really pretty blue that I used for my dog collar. For the dog bone, I used Red Heart with Love Premium. And you're going to have plenty left over of this yarn as well. I just love the color of this one. And the color is Corn Silk. 
but gold will work as well but for this one I chose corn silk so this is optional but for attaching the legs I find it much easier to use these longer upholstery needles so I bought the four piece pack that has different sizes mine has a 6 inch, an 8 inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch, and I usually just use the 12 inch. So we're going to start by making the face. So we're going to make the front head panel. So go ahead and get your white colored yarn, and then you're going to take your yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, and again we're using our 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial, but you're going to need a chain of 11. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one. Two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11. Now, after you finish your chain of 11, you're going to bring in your alternate colored yarn, and I'm using my toffee colored yarn, and you're just going to bring up a loop, and then you're going to set your work down, and then tie a knot. Don't cut the previous colored yarn. So you're not going to cut the white colored yarn. And then just tie a knot. And I leave my crochet hook in there as I tie the knot. Then you're just going to pick up your toffee colored yarn. and then you're going to make a chain of 11. So you just yarn over, go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 11 with the toffee colored yarn and then come back. So now you should have a chain of 11 with the toffee colored yarn. Go ahead and make one more chain to make it 12 and then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch back across until you reach the white colored yarn. So one single crochet in each stitch until you reach the white colored yarn and then come back. So now make sure you count your stitches. You should have 11 total stitches. Then you're going to drop the toffee colored yarn and you have the loop remaining on the crochet hook after you made your last single crochet stitch. Then you're going to pick up your white colored yarn that you had left off before, bring it up from behind, and then you're going to bring up a loop through the loop that's on the crochet hook. Then you're going to take and pull on the toffee colored yarn, just give it a yank, and you can see how it makes that loop disappear, which is what you want. Then you're going to pick up the white colored yarn again and you're going to go into the next stitch bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And then you can pull on the toffee colored yarn again and then you can see how it makes a nice clean color change stitch. And then you're just going to make one single crochet 
And then you want to make sure, so we already made one single crochet, so count the remaining to see how many you have left. So for mine, I went into the stitch where I tied the knot, so it makes an extra stitch. I only want 11 stitches, so for mine, I have 12 right now. So if you are in the same, if you have 11, then you're fine. You can continue making one single crochet into every stitch back across. But if you find that you have 12, then you can go ahead and single crochet two stitches together for your next one. So I'm going to go into the next one, bring up a loop, go into the next one, and bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And then that will decrease the number of stitches by one. So, so far I have two stitches now. I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch for three. Next stitch for four. Next stitch for five single crochet. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now I have exactly eleven stitches with the white colored yarn and eleven stitches with the brown or toffee colored yarn. So we just finished the first row. So now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. So go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back to the toffee colored yarn and then come back. So now you should have 11 total stitches again. Remember to count your chain one as your first stitch and you should have 11 stitches. Then after you finish your 11th single crochet you'll see that you have one white loop remaining on the crochet hook you're going to drop the white colored yarn and you're going to pick up the toffee colored yarn. And then you're going to bring up a loop with your toffee colored yarn. So just yarn over and then bring up a loop with the toffee colored yarn. Then you're going to drop the toffee colored yarn for a minute and then you're going to see how you see the white loop still around the toffee colored yarn. You're going to pick up the, top, the white colored yarn and then just pull on the white colored yarn. And then that makes that little loop disappear. Then you can pick up, drop the white colored yarn, pick up the toffee colored yarn, and then you're going to go into the first stitch of the toffee colored yarn, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch with the toffee colored yarn and when you reach the end you should have 11 stitches with the toffee colored yarn. So make sure your stitch count is right if you want the color changes to come out right and for the front head panel to turn out right. So counting the stitches is very important to make sure it comes out right. So now we just finished the second row and we want a total of 15 rows of doing this color change. So now after you made sure that you have 11 stitches with the toffee colored yarn then you can chain one, turn your work, and repeat. So I'm going to show you one more time and then you can go ahead and continue until you have a total of 15 rows. So now we're on our third row. 
and then I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch until I reach the white colored yarn. And again, you should be making sure that you have 11 stitches of the toffee colored yarn when you reach the white colored yarn. So now I've reached the white colored yarn and I have a total of 11 stitches of the toffee colored so I know I'm doing it correctly. Then after I finish my 11th single crochet stitch with the toffee colored yarn I have one toffee loop remaining on the crochet hook. I'm going to drop the toffee colored yarn, pick up the white colored yarn and then just bring up a loop So now, after I bring up the loop with the white colored yarn, I'm going to pick up the toffee colored yarn and then I'm going to give it a gentle tug and you can see how it makes that toffee colored loop disappear. Then you drop the toffee colored yarn and pick up the white colored yarn and then you go into the first loop, first stitch of the white colored yarn, bring up a loop and then make your single crochet. And that's how you do the color changes. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull on the toffee colored yarn again. And you can see that it helps to get rid of the toffee loop. Then you just make one single crochet in every stitch across. And again you should have 11 stitches with the white colored yarn. So go ahead, keep repeating the color changes and the rows for the front panel until you have a total of 15 rows and then come back. So now you should have 15 total rows of one single crochet in every stitch with the color change and this is how your work should look. So here on my board each of these squares is an inch so you can see that it's just a little bit over 5 inches in width and then for the height it's approximately one two three three and a half inches at this point and now we're going to place the eyes so go ahead and get your free cutout if you need it so on my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com you can get your free download for the cutouts, so all you do is just cut these out and then you can use the paper cutout to get your felt, the black glitter felt cutouts. So you'll need two of those and then you'll need two of the white sparkle glitter felt cutouts. Now with your front head panel, just leave the yarn, leave a little loop where you left off and we're going to come back to that. So for now, after you have your cutouts, we're going to make the eyes and sew the eyes in place. So the first thing you want to do is take your safety doll eye and you want to see where you want to place the eye. So I placed my eye so that I would ha still have one to two millimeters of white showing. And if you want, you can take and mark a little X where you're going to cut the opening for the safety doll eye. And then on the other glitter felt, make sure that you have the sparkle showing on top and the eyes are going to be towards the inside. So they're going to be mirror images of each other. So you don't want one eye over here or over here unless you want the eye looking in a different direction. But if you want the eyes like mine, this is how I placed the X to where I'm going to cut for the opening of the safety doll eye. Then once you know where you want to place the opening for the safety doll eye, you just fold the glitter felt and then you take your scissors and you make a small triangle cut and then just open it up and then you can see how you have a little opening and you can see that the opening is perfect. I have a little bit of the white 
showing on the inner portion of the eye. Now if you made your cut and you didn't have any white showing, you can take and fold it again and then move it over and then you'll have the placement that you want. We're going to be sewing down the white portion so you can move it over if you want to to make sure that you have the white showing where you want it to. Then you want to take and place the white glitter felt on top of the black glitter felt to see where you want to make the entry on the black glitter felt. You want to make the triangular cut the same way. And then you have your opening for the safety doll eye. And you can trim the outer white if you want to. So now I have one eye finished. I'm going to work on the other one. Then I have the safety doll eye through the white and the black glitter felt. I like how the eyes look. Now you're ready to put them onto the front head panel. So now go ahead and place the eyes onto the panel. So I have the right brown spot on the right and I have the loop on the top of the head where we left off and I'm going to go ahead and cut the brown yarn. This is the brown color change yarn. Go ahead and cut that and leave a loose yarn end and then you can go ahead and finish off with the white colored yarn. So go ahead and yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury the loose yarn end. So we're going to come back to the top later when we have the side panel. And go ahead and place the eyes so that the black portion is four rounds down from the top on both sides. Make sure that they're even. And the other important thing is you want the safety doll eye to be even. And I have about two stitches of the brown color and two stitches of the white color open between the eyes. So about four stitches. And you want the color change to be right down the center. And then I have approximately two stitches on this side. And there's about about one to two stitches on the other side. And then you can place your safety latches and you can see that my safety latches are also even. So you don't want one higher and one lower. That means that your safety doll eyes might be crooked. So now you can take your sewing needle and thread. I used my white thread and I didn't double the thread, I just used one strand. And then you're going to take and you're just going to go through the back into the edge of the white glitter felt. And then make sure you leave a long loose yarn end on the back so you can tie a knot with the white thread. Then you just go about a millimeter over along the edge and then go back in. And then you can tie a knot on the wrong side. So you can barely see the stitch. And then just tie a knot. on the wrong side. And then continue sewing. 
So on the wrong side, you can have a larger stitch. So if you want to go about a centimeter up, you can do that. Or you can keep your stitches together closer. But I just want to hold down the white glitter felt. And then I'm just going to go one to two millimeters on the side that's showing and go back in because you don't want large stitches on the side that's going to show. You just want small stitches that are barely noticeable and that will just keep the white glitter felt against the face so it won't come undone. And I don't sew the black down so if you want to sew the black portion down that's up to you but for me I just sewed the white portion down. So now this is what mine looks like after it's all sewn down and on the back. So on the front you can't even see where I stitched it. So now after you finish sewing the eyes you're going to go ahead and turn the work over or not really over but upside down. Then you're going to take and join the white yarn into the top right corner. We're going to be making four additional rows of the color change. So then once you bring up a loop with your white colored yarn, go ahead and tie a knot. Then you can chain one and then make one single crochet into every stitch of the white colored stitches which should be 11. So counting that first chain one is your first stitch. So that's my knot right there. So there's my first chain one. So I have three stitches. Four. So go ahead, finish making your one single crochet in each stitch to the color change. So now I have 11 total stitches. And remember, you can always single crochet two stitches together if you have 12 for those last two to make one. So you should have a total of 11 stitches with the white. Then you're going to bring in the toffee colored. Remember, you have the white loop remaining on the crochet hook. Go ahead and bring up a loop with your toffee colored yarn. And then just tie a knot. Then you can crochet into the next toffee stitch. And then just finish making one single crochet into each stitch across. And you should still have a total of 11 stitches with the toffee color. Then when you reach the end, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And this is the second row, so remember we need four total rows of the color changes. So now you, you remember how to do the color changes from before. So go ahead and finish your four additional rows beneath where we joined for the bottom portion of the face. So we finished one row, we need three more. So now you should have four additional rows of the color change. Then we're going to make eight more rows of just the white colored yarn. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you can go ahead and cut the brown colored yarn, but remember to tie a knot once you reach it with the loose yarn end to secure that loose yarn end. So then you just make one single crochet into every stitch across. And when you reach the brown colored yarn or toffee colored yarn, you're going to tie a knot 
and remember you still have a total for the row of 22 stitches because you have 11 of the white and now you're just going to make 11 more with the brown colored yarn so you can go ahead and tie a knot when you reach the brown colored yarn and then you just resume crocheting one single crochet into every stitch across and again each row should have 22 stitches and you need eight additional rows of just the white one single crochet in every stitch. After you finish your eight additional rows of just the white colored yarn you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury the loose yarn ends. Then you can go ahead and set this portion aside, this front panel aside, because we're going to make the snout. So now you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round and we can close the center of the magic circle. Just take and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn end. Then we're going to continue our increase rounds, meaning that we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. So go ahead and grab a yarn marker. I just use one of my scraps of yarn and just place it right where you left off. So we're going to be making five increase rounds for those that already know how to do it. And we're going to go in chronological order. So the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so one single crochet into the next stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add six to the previous round stitch count. So we had 12 stitches on the previous round so if you add six to that that means that you should have ended up with 18 total stitches for this round. And that's because we started with a six single crochet magic circle. So again, this next round that we're going to increase round that we're going to do, just add six to it to get your stitch count. So again, this one was 18. So after we finish our next increase round, you should have 24 stitches. So now go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Then, for the next increase round, just move your yarn marker up and this time you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then, for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then the last increase round is one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can see 
after you finish that last increase round that we have a total of 42 stitches in the round. So now you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and you're not going to make increase rounds. You're going to maintain the stitch count now and you're going to maintain the stitch count for an additional four rounds. So you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for four rounds. So you're not going to remove the yarn marker when you get to it. So when you get to the yarn marker you're just going to leave it in place so you can keep track of your rounds. But every time you reach your yarn marker you should still be maintaining the stitch count of 42. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch around for four rounds and then come back. So this is how my work looks after making one single crochet in every stitch around for four rounds. You should have a little bit of a cup formation which is what you want. Then you're going to move up your yarn marker because we're going to make one decrease round. So a decrease round means that we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. So for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch or it's also known as single crochet two stitches together. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Now you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I'm going to make one more set with you. So you make one single crochet into four stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decreased stitch. So go ahead, repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 35 stitches in the round. If you're off by one, that's okay. But now you need to maintain the stitch count. So go ahead and remove the yarn marker, place it right where you left off. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch for seven rounds. So now you want to maintain your stitch count for seven rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish seven rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, this is what your work should look like and then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just go right into that next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to sew the snout on later. And then you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then just set the snout aside for now while we make the nose. So go ahead and get your black colored yarn. I'm using my sparkle black colored yarn. And you're going to take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook and go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. 
Now we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial, but you're going to make a chain of 15. So go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your first chain. Second. Third. Fourth. So go ahead, finish a chain of 15, and then come back. Then, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So here's the first chain, here's the second chain. Go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And when you reach the last stitch, come back and I'll work that stitch with you. So one single crochet in every stitch back across. So now I have one stitch left on the end. In this last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. And as you make your single crochet stitches you're going to be turning your work and working in rounds. We're going to work on the opposite side. and I'm going to go behind my loose yarn end as I crochet to bury it. So three single crochet into that last stitch and then turn your work. So here is where we made our single crochets back across and now we're on the opposite side working in rounds. Then you're just going to take your crochet hook go into the next stitch, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and make your single crochet. And You're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So now I have 30 stitches in the round. If you're off by one stitch, that's fine, as long as you're close. But now you need to maintain your stitch count. So you don't want to keep increasing the stitch count. You want to maintain whatever stitch count that you finished off with this first round. So now you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So you just go into the next stitch, the first stitch in the round, and you just make one single crochet. And then one single crochet in every stitch for a total of three rounds. So you want to maintain your stitch count for these three rounds. So for mine, I had 30 stitches in the round, so I'm going to maintain the 30 stitch count each time I reach the yarn marker. And then as you crochet, kind of turn your work, kind of cup it upwards, and then this would be the wrong side on the inside, and then you're crocheting along the outer edge, and then this is the right side. Now after you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, this is how your work should look. Then you're going to take and remove the yarn marker and then just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to complete a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. And for the nose, you can see that sometimes you'll have some op a little bit of an opening along the center. So I don't use regular craft stuffing, I just use some of the extra yarn. So go ahead and just take a little bit of that extra yarn 
and use that as stuffing. So then you just take a little bit of that extra yarn and just stuff it right in the center of the nose. And then you'll use that as stuffing. And then you can't see it on the inside of the nose. That's why I like to stuff the nose with the yarn. And then you're ready to sew the nose in place onto the snout. So now you want to take and center the nose. And I use the magic circle as a landmark. So for my nose, I went two rounds up from the magic circle. So one, two, and at the top of that second round is where I centered the nose. Then you're going to sew all around the base of the nose. So you just go in and out sewing all around the base of the nose. On some parts you can take and go in and then come up if you want to do it that way too but sometimes it's easier just to go right in especially when you're trying to center and don't worry for the first round you may skip some stitches you're going to you can go back around and sew again to make sure the first round is just to position the nose and then the second or even third round is to make sure that the nose is really secure and then for the top portion of the nose I centered it counted from the back of the snout one two three four five six seven eight nine so beneath the ninth round is where I centered the top of the nose and then I just sewed all the way around the base of the nose, securing it in place. So this is how your nose should look after you finish sewing it in place. Then you can go ahead and set the snout aside for now. We're going to make the mouth portion. So for the mouth, you're going to start with your white colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then we're going to make a chain of 12. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorial. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 12, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 12, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So just count back to one, two, put your crochet hook into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and then that will give you a stitch count of 11 for the first row. So that first chain that we made is the starting chain. And now we're working one single crochet in every stitch back across for our first row. And when we finish the first row, you should have a stitch count of 11. So now you should have a stitch count of 11 and for the next five rows we're going to maintain the stitch count of 11 and to do that to move up to that first row so it's actually the second but I'm going to call it the first because we're going to make five total rows so I'm going to call it the first so you can keep track of your the row that we're on so if you want to count the total rows, counting this first row we made, that would mean six rows total. So now for the next five rows, we're going to maintain the stitch count of 11. So to do that, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and that first chain one 
counts as the first stitch for this next row. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And that's your second stitch. Third stitch. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across. So now you should still have a stitch count of 11 and we're going to move up to the next row. So chain one, turn your work, and repeat. So you're going to keep doing that until you finished. I'm just going to say a total of six rows. So you count that first row we made, that was the second row, now you're on the third, and you're maintaining your stitch count of 11 for each row. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and make one single crochet in every stitch across until you finished a total of six rows. So this is how your work should look after finishing six rows. Then, after you finish your last single crochet, this next row you are not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and when you finish this row, that should give you a stitch count of 10 because we didn't chain one. So now you should have a stitch count of 10. I just finished my last single crochet and this will be our last row. You're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work again. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then make your single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, and that will give you a stitch count of nine when you finish this last row. Then, when you finish your last single crochet, you should have a stitch count of nine. Go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you're just going to take your brown colored yarn and again I used for the inside of the mouth I used Karen Simply Soft yarn and the color that I chose was chocolate. And as you can see even though I made it the exact same way because it's a different style of yarn it's going to be slightly smaller which is what I want. Now if you're using a different style of yarn you may have to start with a smaller chain. So for the white portion we started with a chain of 12. So you may want to start with a chain of 11 or even 10 if you're using a different style of yarn. If you're using the same style of yarn as me, go ahead and make it the exact same way and this is how your work should look when you're finished. But like I said, if you want to use your black yarn then you may need to start with a smaller chain, but then the rest of it you, you make the exact same way. And then it will be, it should be slightly smaller, just like mine looks now with the brown and the white. So now you're going to take your tapestry needle and the larger end is the that goes towards the back of the snout. The smaller end is the opening for the open portion of the mouth. And you're going to take this yarn, these yarn strands that are on the open portion of the mouth and you're going to move them towards the inside. So just take your tapestry needle and you're just going to weave that loose yarn end towards the wrong side and then just kind of bury it into the wrong side of the mouth. So 
So there's one, and then you want to repeat that with the white yarn. Then you want to take and tie a knot with the two back loose yarn ends. And then you're just going to be tucking those into the wrong side. And you can trim them if you want to, just to get them out of the way. And then we're going to crochet the two pieces together. So you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into that corner stitch. So you want to grab both the brown colored yarn and the white colored yarn and then bring up a loop with your white colored yarn. Go ahead and chain one and then just tie a knot. You can hear the Oriole in the background. It's one of my Orioles, the Oriole feeder. Then you're just going to take and chain one again, and then you're going to make one single crochet evenly spaced across, crocheting the two pieces together. So you're just going to evenly space one single crochet all the way across and then when you reach the front of the mouth you can see how it curves so here you can see the curve now around those stitches you may need to put two single crochet into the same stitch so you can kind of wiggle your crochet hook like you saw me to get through both the top and the bottom portion of the mouth and you're just crocheting the two pieces together. So now I've reached the curve, so I'm going to place two single crochet into the same stitch. And then I'm going to go across the top of the mouth into the next stitch around that curve and make two single crochet into that stitch. And then you're just going to make one single crochet across the top and you're going to finish making one single crochet and then you're going to need two single crochet into each of those curved stitches and then one single crochet down the opposite side. And just leave the back portion of the mouth open. So don't crochet that portion and then come back. So this is how mine looks and you can see that I've reached the opposite side so you can go ahead and finish off after you finish your last single crochet, just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to sew the mouth to the snout. So the reason why I like having the slightly smaller brown portion is you can see how it curves up the bottom of the mouth, which is what I wanted. So it kind of slightly curves it up to form the bottom of the mouth. And then you have a little bit in the back, which is fine. So you're going to be sewing along this portion in like an oval shape to the bottom of the snout later. But first, before we do that, we want to sew the tongue on. And you can kind of tuck your loose yarn ends into the inside of the mouth. So now we're going to make the tongue that goes into the mouth. So go ahead and set this aside and get your light pink colored yarn. 